Greetings everyone, this is the PC Security Channel and as you know I just made a video a few days ago of AVG 2014 their internet security package I gave it a full review but just a few days later they have finally released their 2015 beta so they have made some changes here and I want to show you the brand new user interface so as you can see the UI is completely revamped Honestly, uh, the core of the interface is still the same, it's just a skin change for all I know. And they still have the same security components, that is your computer protection, your web protection identity, email, firewall protection, and uh, as usual the identity protection is the behavior blocker or the zero day component of the security suite. Now what's interesting to note is that a lot of the user interface is still the same like for example the advanced settings haven't changed and you still have the report section so if we do an update here you can go into reports and check that one out but as I said I was not a big fan of this report section and the way it used to do its scans but unfortunately that hasn't been changed at all in this version so they're sticking with that that's uh, kinda of bad news for me and uh, I was seriously hoping they would change the way it removes malware or maybe the scanner face maybe they could make it into a separate module itself but that hasn't happened and they're still sticking with the report section however I do like the new user interface I do prefer the new skin to the older one so that is a bit of a improvement but nothing really to be noticed I mean the security is still very much similar and uh, since the engine and everything else remains the same, I won't be giving it another full review because there's no point. The security is basically just the same as the 2014 version. However, in my last video, a lot of people said that identity protection is set to a lower security level by default. As you can see, it says automatically quarantine known threats. So. Some people say that if you set it to always prompt, it's going to give you more alerts, but at the same time more security. So today, instead of doing another regular test, I will be doing a separate test of the identity protection in its highest security setting to see how their new beta, if at all, it has uh, brought any improvements in this section. If not, we'll just be uh, looking forward to see how their behavior blocker works. So what I'll do is I'll just turn off the antivirus to start with and then I'll just grab some files that I have previously selected. I'm sure we have it here. And so in this folder I have 10 pieces of malware. They're all fairly dangerous and I want to see if AVG's behavior blocker can protect us against these files. So this test is going to simulate how AVG is going to protect you against an unknown array of malware. So all of this is unknown right now because I've turned off the signatures. So basically all it has to protect us is the identity protection and let's see if it can do the job. So here goes the first file. In fact, it's the last, the last file. I'm going to start from the bottom here. And as you can see, so far I haven't received any alert from AVG. So I'm just going to wait and uh, continue. Once again, no alert. Finally, AVG detection, general behavioral detection. And I'm going to say protect me. This is 336, so it is indeed the second file that we ran. The first one still hasn't been caught. And AVG is taking quite a while to get rid of this. Now another problem I have with identity protection is its removal process isn't that great. Sometimes it can take a long time, like it's taking right now, or sometimes it can fail entirely, which is not a good thing and they don't have any follow-ups to that so if the removal fails it's not like it's going to remove on restart or anything it's just gonna fail and that's the end of that so that is something that I was again seriously hoping they would work on in their new version but they haven't done that 
but luckily this file did get removed. Now the last one probably deleted itself, that's what I'm assuming, but I'm not sure if that was the case. I certainly don't see anything running. So anyway, we'll just go ahead with the test and run whatever we have left. So this one resembles Steam, and I'm sure it ran. I haven't got any alert from AVG once again. Let's try this one out. And that's running as well. IDP is silent. Keep in mind that I have uh, set IDP to the highest security level possible. So if it's not working now, it's never going to work. So this is another adware. Now the firewall is asking me whether I should allow or block the connection, so I'll go ahead and block it. Although this is more of an IDP test, and there you go. So it did catch something more, behavioral detection. So once again I'm going to say protect me. and some file was created in the documents folder that it found to be malicious. So let's wait while this file is being removed. Now one thing I like or maybe don't like about IDP is the way it fades the screen out when it's doing something. So you pretty much have to wait until the malware has been removed. So it looks like this one was blocked successfully. I'm not sure if it was blocked entirely, but uh, it must have failed because the firewall blocked it. Now let's try running this one. It has the thumbnail of an image. As some people might think it's some kind of image opening, but clearly it's not. It's an executable and it's doing something really bad. There you go, server 32-bit, so I'm pretty sure this opening a back door or something like that. And so far IDP hasn't given us an alert. Now one thing I'm noticing is that IDP is fairly slow to respond. So it might respond after quite a while. So I'll give it as much time as it needs before I start doing my second opinion sta uh, scanning stage. So once again this one ran, no alert. Now this one's running. Once again, it looks kind of like an image, but any smart guy would know that this is an application. Well, in fact, it does open up an image, but it's not going to work. I don't know why. Or maybe this is just a uh, you know, fake window. Now once again, this is a communication request. OK, another behavioral detection. Malware 25, so let's just uh, protect ourselves. And then I'm going to block the firewall alert because I don't want this application to connect to the internet. Although I have a feeling that this could be a false positive because the publisher is NVIDIA, unless of course that is fake and somebody's managed to get AVG to think that it's NVIDIA, but if it does have a digital signature from NVIDIA, I don't think it would be malware. But anyway, let's wait for AVG to remove this first. The IDP does seem more responsive now that I've set it to a higher security level than it was uh, in my last test. So that is some good news. At least I'm seeing most of the major things being blocked. So now this is the bad thing. So it says removing the threat, ha uh, removing of threat has failed. Why access is denied? Come on, AVG, you're the antivirus. You're the one who should be uh, denying the access, and uh, you got denied. So that's not a good thing. And the only button I have over here is close. So I'm basically helpless. All I can do is just hit the close button and continue. So, although this does look safe, I'm going to block it, because it was part of my list. 
so I'm definitely not happy that APG was unable to remove the file. If it does manage to block it from doing something harmful and maybe removes it on reboot, I have no problem. But from what it looks like, it's not going to do any of that. It's just failed and that's the end of that. And that is not a good thing. Let's reboot and see if uh, APG does indeed remove it later on. Now this is another ad where I'm not sure if APG is going to protect us against this thing. So it's taking me to some website. Adware is pretty difficult. Okay, so the last one did it, guys. Look at this. Computer restart, automatic, and uh, you, you can almost be sure that you've been infected. And AVG wasn't able to block that one with its um, IDP. I mean, that's something it should have been looking out for. When somebody, something's restarting the computer without any user command, you should probably check its behavior, but AVG didn't do that, and it was too quick, I guess. IDP takes quite a while to analyze programs, but let's hang on and see if AVG can block some of these things on startup. So far, no alerts. I am seeing some stuff running. Definitely. So it's definitely not a clean computer. Now the question is whether or not AVG can protect us. I do have this thing running. This is at least one piece of malware that I'm sure is in here. And it wasn't removed on restart either. Once again I'm gonna block this. And I'm not exactly sure what the file did, the one that restarted the system. It appears to have deleted itself, which makes it even more interesting. So anyway, I'm just going to let the system run and let AVG do its analyzing stuff or whatever. And uh, then I will just run my second opinion scanners to see how well or how bad it did. Well, I rebooted the system and ran my second opinion scans, and uh, just from the offset here, I'd like to let you guys know that the system doesn't look very infected. However, the results are a completely different story. Let's start with Hitman Pro. Now first, uh, the big uh, disaster here, we've got a volume boot record rootkit. So that is definitely not a good thing, I mean a rootkit infection is one of the worst kind of things uh, I've seen and the problem is it's really difficult to detect these things and I'm going to uh, demonstrate that in a little while and uh, as you can see uh, here's another executable which is a backdoor Trojan and another one which is active another one which is active again and finally the server.exe which we saw is running here as a process fairly easy to spot. There you go. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the malware that's easily visible, like server.exe, we generally think that these are the real deals and uh, the rest don't really matter, but for me, I mean, the malware that's really dangerous is the one that's hardest to detect. And that would be this, or this, or maybe even this, because we're not seeing it running. I mean, uh, you could easily just go and terminate this process, but to remove all this malware could be a real pain. So once again, I'm not at all happy with the result of this uh, product in terms of zero-day protection. We've got plenty of infections, active malware running on the system, and things are just not looking good. And this is just Hitman Pro. So let's see what Malwarebytes has to say. Now again, uh, Malwarebytes scan detected quite a bit of stuff. We've got Trojan, Botgen, we've got a file, a process, as you can see, it's the same one over here that Malwarebytes has caught. And then we have, as usual, the server.exe, the name gives it away, basically. And then we've got a registry key that, have, that has been created and modified, and then we've got another process. Okay, it's basically the same process. 
and then we have something in start and then we have another misused legit file and then we have another executable stolen data dot sys file definitely not a good thing then again another registry key and another VBS file so well plenty of infections here but the interesting thing to note is uh, Malwarebytes was unable to detect the rootkit which uh, you know makes uh, you understand why Hitman Pro is such a good uh, scanner because although it may seem it doesn't infect as uh, it doesn't detect as many infections as Malwarebytes does but sometimes it catches things that are really difficult to catch usually so as you can see this computer is a wreck it may not look regular uh, like a wreck it's not the most active malware that runs around like a circus and you can basically know that this computer is infected but this is one of the silent killers so definitely not happy with the result so my final verdict on AVG Internet Security well the results speak for themselves it was completely ineffective in preventing infections now the identity protection did pop up a couple of times but that was far from adequate and uh, as I showed you guys I did set it to the highest possible security level and if at this level this is the kind of protection you're going to offer well this is not gonna do definitely not so I would never recommend running AVG Internet Security as your primary zero-day defenses if you're using it for the signatures that's okay but if you're someone who likes your day identity protection is not going to do you'd probably be much better off with um, let's say some behavior blocker like MCSoft or Komodo firewall uh, I can think of some more solutions as well but this is definitely not good as you saw the system was compromised we've got some very severe infections although the malware may not be running around like a circus um, it's down there and it's killing the system it might it might be stealing my data who knows what it's doing so these kinds of infections are usually worse than the ones that you just see where the system slows to a crawl and you know tons of tabs open because those are the easiest to diagnose but infections like these are difficult to catch so I hope you guys enjoyed this video I know a lot of you are probably disappointed in me not doing a full review and just doing a review of the IDP but as I said for those of you guys who want to see the entire test the proper test please watch my video of the 2014 internet security which I performed very recently so I feel it is unnecessary to test the same thing again because the signatures and engine remains the same the only thing that could have changed was the behavior blocker that is why I did the separate test so I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Have a nice day. I'll see you guys in the next Peace Security Channel video.